I love old nutrition books. Here's one from 1652. What's really fascinating to me is the repeated rise and fall of zero-fiber diets. The carnivore diet has been popular five different times in America since the mid-1800s, and I've read all the books that started those movements. I can't even count all the times the milk diet has been considered miraculous or the egg diet. Just think of how incredibly popular Vince Gironda's steak and egg diet was starting in the 50s, which hooked my dad. But I've never been able to find anybody who adhered to those diets for a sustained period of time and lived long. James Salisbury, who popularized the carnivore diet in the late 1800s, lived to 82, but that's about all I can find. Most of the others didn't make it out of their 70s. And I always wondered why that was. They weren't eating processed foods. They didn't smoke or drink. This paper in Nature was published by scientists in five leading universities across three countries who carefully followed 105,000 medical professionals for 30 years to determine which dietary patterns got them to age 70 without a chronic disease. And I'm not aware of any nutrition scientists who disagree with this paper. And what did they find? The items least likely to get us to age 70 healthy are sodium, meat, and trans fat. The wisdom of previous centuries was to eat the widest variety of food possible. Blackbirds, squirrels, wild greens, flowers, and berries. But not until 20 years or so ago have we known about the profound influence of the microbiome and the central role that fiber plays in preserving it. My big takeaway from the interviews with Sean and Tomiko on my YouTube channel is that the microbiome acts like organs, such as kidneys or the pancreas. If you lose enough kidney or pancreatic cells, you end up in dialysis or on insulin. The microbiome is like that because if we lose species, maybe from antibiotics or a low-fiber diet, the foods we were once able to digest and were good for us now cause bloating, gas, and inflammation because the species that made digesting fiber easy are no longer in us.